what's up guys, David 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah oh, yes, list day, and uh, today's gonna be a fun one because Dave's a tad hungover. I had a day last night. We had a lot of fun, but we drank a little too much, and now I'm pretty green around the gills. So, we're gonna just have to deal with the fact that I feel kind of sick. And you know what? Speaking of sick, that gives me a great idea for a video. The current state of the world's got people all scared about quarantines and airport security and things like that. So before we have to bend down to our virus overlord, why don't we take a good long look at some of the other cool viruses that are infecting this game. Because nothing says making light of, of a global pandemic like Yu-Gi-Oh! Top Tens. I'm gonna preface this list with, um, this is all in good fun, but seriously guys, wash your damn hands. Like, you know, we all laugh at this, it's, it's, it's fun and stuff, but like, you know, as long as we're all careful, we'll be fine. Just, you know, take it seriously, but like, stop freaking out, wash your hands. Does that mean the next list is top 10 toilet paper Yu-Gi-Oh's car? <laughs> top 10 hoarding? But yes, let's look at their top 10 professional sick boys in Yu-Gi-Oh! Number 10 is Infestation Pandemic. <laughs> this, is, this is a very poor taste. Infestation Pandemic is a quick play spell card that reads, All face up ill sworn monsters you currently control are unaffected by spell or trap cards for the rest of the turn. So why do we why do we care about this card? It's clearly extremely landlocked into ill swarms, a deck that hasn't seen competitive play in like forever. Um, well, that's because it's searchable by Ophion. Ophion is your Eel Swarm rank 4 that has the amazing effect. While this XE monster has XE material, your opponent can't spell to summon monsters of level 5 or higher. In the right meta, this is a very, very powerful Floodgate monster, and the fact that it is a rank 4 means it's extremely accessible from the deck as long as the deck you are playing is Ill Swarms. You can detach one material from this card to add one Infestation spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. So the obvious synergy here is you play your big Locky Down Boy, and then you search Pandemic so that you can then set that, and it, it helps you uh, protect him from any of your opponent's outs to the Floodgate. Overall, it's a really useful strategy, and could come back as a viable anti-meta deck, depending on the format. Number 9 is Tribe Shocking Virus. This level 4 Water Thunder monster that is extremely strangely typed has the following effect. You can banish one monster from your hand, destroy all face-up monsters with the same type as the banished monster. Okay, so uh, his cost is a little lame. Banishing a card out of your hand is, uh, isn't great. You'd rather it be a discard, uh, so at least in your graveyard for some graveyard setup. But uh, certain decks can use the Banish, and I believe this card was actually pretty useful in Duel Links because it, in like a mirror match type deal, it is pretty solid at getting rid of problem monsters. And the fact that uh, it does kind of let you pick and choose what it's blowing up is inherently kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why they, they call this a virus card though, other than its obvious association with another card on the list, but it's just like, they look more like sea mines. I don't know. Here we go, Pandemic Dragon. Here's a card you probably have never heard of, but uh, I think it's kind of neat, and if nothing else, its card design is, is clever because it does what you'd think it would do, considering that it is some sort of sick dragon. Once per turn, you can pay life points in multiples of 100. Other face-up monsters on the field lose that much attack power. Okay, so he spreads an illness. He makes all the other face-up monsters on the field sick boys, so they lose their battle prowess. Okay, cool. Being able to pay pretty much as much life points as you want is actually really handy, especially for certain card effects and certain combo decks. And the only real thing that's a problem with this card is it's a little bit high in level, so if you're trying to play it in some sort of cheesy, like reverse burn kind of deck or something like that, you might find it a little hard to get on board. But it is one of the few cards in the game that lets you just kind of like spend as much life points as you want. Once per turn, you can target one other face-up monster on the field that has a lower attack than this monster and blow it up. Obviously that combos with its first effect because even if there's some sort of super big boy on your opponent's side of the field, you can get him to to field that Rona, and then you just, you just blow him up, just as he succumbs to it. He's just like, okay, topological boomer dragon. <laughs> if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, all other face-up monsters on the field lose 1,000 attacks. So even if your opponent gets rid of your, your flying disease bag dragon, he, uh, he does not go down silently into the night. Nope. His bloated disease corpse explodes like uh, that rot fiend from The Witcher. <laughs> Gross. Here we go, another dragon that's uh, a little under the weather, 
Doom Virus Dragon. Doom Virus Dragon is level 4 fusion monster with the following effect. Must be summoned by the Fang of Critias. Okay, so it's one of them uh, legendary dragon cards. Okay, cool. Using Crush Card Virus as the material. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's how Kaiba made this thing in the anime. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If this card is special summoned, look at your opponent's hand, all cards they control, and every card they draw for the next three turns, and destroy any of those cards that are monsters with 1500 or more attack power. <laughs> emulating the effect of Crush Card Virus. But it's a body, it's a monster on board, and it's summoned by a spell card, which is not too uh, hard to use. So, hey, it's a, a pretty solid, oppressive card. And the fact that he only has 1900 attack isn't the worst thing in the world because your opponent's gonna have a hard time getting at least main deck monsters on board that can deal with him. Granted, now that we're a very heavy extra deck type style of gameplay, uh, your deck may not have any main deck monsters with 1500 or more attack, and it's just Synchro Shokan into something big. So that's kind of annoying for Doom Virus Dragon, but he does cull the, cull the strong. Interesting. Gritting Grave Virus. Yeah, now we're actually getting into some of the pathogens that are actually infecting some of these sick boys. Green Grave Virus does the following effect. Tribute a dark monster with 3,000 or less attack power. Your opponent destroys one card of their choice from their hand or deck for every 500 attack multiples that that monster had. So if you had 2,000 attack power, you destroy four cards. And you can destroy all monsters for the next three turns at anything your opponent draws if the monster you tributed had 2,000 or more attack. So yes, you could just normal summon something with like 1,500 attack level four and pop that to make them destroy three cards out of their hand or deck, but it's uh, it gets its biggest, most uh, stereotypically virus card effect if you do sack a bigger monster. Which is cool because the bigger the monster you sack, up to 3,000 means the more the card works. So you are getting lots of benefits for uh, getting rid of a monster that was presumably hard for you to get on board. Also, cards destroyed by this card's effect do not activate their effects the turn they are sent to the graveyard. So, uh, this gets around some of the problems where like, oh, thanks buddy for destroying cards out of my deck, I just get a bunch of effects. The last thing you want to do is try to get your opponent's deck infected by a virus. No! My cards! Only to find out that they, uh, they, I don't know, there's, I don't know a real life analogy where getting sick would actually be a positive thing. They're asymptomatic and ends up just being like a vaccine? Helping them out? Uh, that's a rough analogy, Dave. But overall, what a fantastically cheeky card. This card is cheeky. The headache's real. Mm. Big energy, big energy. Full force virus. Again, another pathogen card. What do? This normal trap card reads, tribute one dark monster with 2,000 or more defense. Hmm, defense this time. Look at your opponent's hand, all the monsters they control, as well as the cards they draw for the next three turns, and you destroy any cards among those that are monsters with 1,500 or less defense. Full Force Virus is actually a pretty solid card, and in some ways, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, might even be better than OG Crush Card. Because back in the day, Crush Card was pretty broke because Everyone was playing like main deck beatdown for the most part, so knocking all your strong guys pushes you at a very bad disadvantage. However, nowadays there's like, you know, most people's decks are like a bunch of low powered material meant to make an extra deck monster. A lot of them tend to have pretty lousy defense, so this thing could be extremely detrimental. It also can kind of double as old crush card because a lot of times those big beaters that like crush card was trying to get rid of had high attack power but low defense so they could still be like level four and normal summonable. So this thing even kind of works as like an OG crush card, which is also kind of neat. Could you imagine if there was a bunch of little bats just floating around in your bloodstream making you feel ill? This is what the pathogens look like for that illness that makes you a vampire in like video games. It looks like this. Deck devastation virus. Ah yes, nothing like getting a good case of de Devastation Virus. Are you surprised that most of this list are just the Virus Trap cards? I, I would 
I'm surprised that you're surprised. Tribute to Dark Monster with uh, 2,000 or more attack power. Look at all the cards they control, look at their hand, and all the cards they draw for like the, the next three turns, and destroy all monsters with 1,500 or less attack. So again, this works a little bit like Full Force Virus, but instead of defense, it's attack, and it does the other end of Spectrum that Crush Card used to do. I mean, these all just kind of do the same thing, just nuke your opponent's resources before they get to use them. I don't know what else to say about it. The artwork's pretty cool. Wiggly Germ. Number three is Plague Spreader Zombie. Ah yes, Cheek Spreader Zombie is one of the best tuners in the game. Oh yeah. Even still, and it's solidly the best tuner in Duel Lanes, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I can... I can't think of anything else on the top of my head. A tuner that lets you recur itself from the graveyard? Sounds like synchro spam to me. Now that we're getting Master Rule 5, for revision or whatever the hell you want to call it, Plague Spreader Zombie can finally function again like he used to. If this card's in your graveyard, you can top deck one card from your hand and then special some of this from your graveyard, but it is banished when it leaves the field, so you just don't keep doing this. Unless you have something that prevents banishing, then you can loop it. Ha 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 ha! Top decking is a lame way to pay cost, unless of course you're running cards like Rank Up Magic the seventh one? Mahad? I don't know. Weird stupid cards where you have to draw, sack them to like get them to work. This is a good way of top decking those things. Or if, I don't know, you're playing like something like Spiral, I don't know why you put I don't know why you would put Plague Spreader Zombie in a Spiral deck. I'm just talking for to make a point. <laughs> you could top deck your uh, Spiral Resort so that when your 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 master plan gets sent to graveyard, her full effect resolves, and because this is tactically in your deck. There's weird things you can do to make that advantageous, even though on its surface that sounds like a, a pretty pretty lame thing to, to have to do. Not only that, but he does have his own like package of synchro monsters that can be made just with him. None of them are particularly good, however, it's at least kind of cool that you have that option. Yay! Number two is Tribe Infecting Virus. Tribe Infecting Virus is basically the polio of Yu-Gi-Oh. We thought it was gone, uh, completely eradicated, but uh, lo and behold, due to some of the people just not caring anymore, it made a comeback. <laughs> See, now that analogy worked better than the last one. I'm pretty positive that, like, this is one of the few monster cards in the game where the monster itself is not depicted in the card art. Because, like, I'm assuming that the dudes here that are, like, grasping at themselves in their death throes are dudes getting killed by the virus. So, I mean, maybe the virus is the little yellow dots? No. But anyway, what does it do? Discard a card from hand, select a type of monster, and destroy all monsters on the field of that type. Yes, this is basically what shock uh, infecting, what the hell was it called? The sea mine card. Sea mine? Sea mine! This is basically that, but better, because you discard a card instead of banishing it, means it's now in your graveyard, so if it's like something like a Destiny Hero Malicious, it's nice and cozy where it wants to be. Also, it's not a hard once per turn, so you could use this card to discard your whole hand. It's also a water, so if you're playing like Atlanteans, you can get cheeky with that. Honestly, it's a, a pretty solid card, and I, I really honestly think the reason why it doesn't see more play is because like, I don't know, you have to blow your normal summon on it, and there's not a lot of decks built around it, so it's a little cumbersome to use. But the card's actually fantastic, and there's really nothing wrong with it, even though it's a little antiquated. Is it a little high on the list for what it actually does? Of course, but I I couldn't pass up a, to, a chance to make the polio joke. I really made a joke about polio, and that makes me a bad person. I mean, this whole video is in pretty poor taste, so I guess there's that. All right, guys, now we're on to the honorable mention. Crush Card Virus, Pre-Errata. Pre-Errata Crush Card Virus is the one that Kaiba uses in the anime against Yugi in their duel on their roof, and it's also, like, uh, basically the same effect as your Doom Virus Dragon, which is, uh, I guess, cool. Tribute a Dark Monster with 1,000 or less attack power. Check all monsters your opponent controls, all the cards in your hand, and the cards they draw for the next three turns, and if it's a monster with 1,500 or more attack, you blow it up, like I mentioned before. Why did this card get an errata? This effect's obviously fan-freaking-tastic, and the fact that it requires a very low attack power monster means that you can use it on something that's probably very easy to get on board, like a normal summon. All the other virus cards require you to sack a, a huge monster, which means that you kind of went through some hoops and you lost some resources to get that bad boy on board, now you're sacking it for like a neg two just to hope that you blow up your opponent's hand and deck. This thing though, it's a lot less of an investment and you get a lot more for it, potentially. Especially in older school Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said before, when mind deck, mo mind deck monsters, main deck monsters tend to be a lot more beefy. To be fair, 
even nowadays, a lot of those decks where all the main deck monsters just make extra deck monsters, a lot of them do have respectable stats. Thank you. For infecting my audio. Ah! Overall, pre erotic crush card is... <coughs> it's, it's that. It's decidedly that. <laughs> That's not good. And the dishonorable mention is actual crush card. <laughs> Why? Oh boy, did they butcher this card. Sack a dark dude with less than a thousand attack, like we said before. Your opponent doesn't take any battle damage till the end of the next turn after this card was activated. Thanks. You look at your opponent's hand and all monsters they control, and you pop all the ones with 1500 or more attack power. Kind of like original crush card does. Then your opponent gets to destroy up to three monsters with 1500 or more attack power from their deck, if they want to. What a stupid, stupid thing for the card to do. You are giving your opponent a free three foolish burials. And it's not even mandatory, but it's like, oh, well, I'm a combo-based deck, and I can't put any of my garnets into my graveyard because it screws up my combos. No, because this is not mandatory for your opponent to do, so if it hurts their deck for some odd reason, they would just choose not to do it. But if it helps them, uh, then it's like like Cosmos, and then, and then they get a bunch of effects, because it's not just a send to graveyard, it is a destroy, so there might be some cheesy interactions that happen with that, which is probably why Grinning says that you can't use their effects, because they realize that this stupid effect tends to just actually help your opponent. Granted, you're nuking their board, but you can't utilize it because you can't do any battle damage to them, so you're just giving them some graveyard set up, and they're gonna like rebuild their board next time, now that they basically get to sit on it and have to worry about getting OTK'd. What'd they do to you, buddy? Look how they mess with my boy. And you set, you set up their graveyard, it's so bad! Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one is Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Yeah, uh, Eradicator is the best one. I know it's late into the video and I probably should have mentioned this the first time we hit one of these, but I wanted to make sure that I, I, I showed you all of these first so then I could make a segue into Layer of Darkness. Layer of Darkness is a field card that makes everything darks, and if you would tribute a dark monster in order to activate an effect for a card you control, you can use an opponent's monster instead. Obviously, this field card combos really well with all of the virus cards, like the actual virus trap cards we talked about for this entire video. But anyway, what, uh, what does Eradicator do? Sack a dark dude with 2,500 or more attack power. Okay, so you get at least a dark magician. To clear a type of card, either spell or trap. Look at your opponent's hand, all cards they control, and the cards they draw for the next three turns, and destroy all cards they have of that declared type. Yu-Gi-Oh! is very monster effect heavy nowadays, but there are certain decks that do rely on their spell cards. The Sky Strikers comes to mind, even though that's a little... A little out of date now, because the ban list kind of kicked him in the groin. I don't know you! <laughs> Who's next? But even still, there are certain decks, including modern decks, that do require spells or traps to function. Not only does it cripple decks that rely on their spells and traps just to play their main strategy, it also works in games 2 and 3 for a very unique kind of way. There's lots of floodgates in this game and, like, tech quick play spell cards that one would slide into their deck's game two and three against an opponent that is not something they would necessarily be putting in their main deck. So what Eradicator Virus does is it's actually a handy anti-side deck card. Does your deck lose to a certain spell card that your opponent was probably going to be running in their side deck? Eradicator will deal with that for you and you barely even have to get lucky with like an MST against a face down. So as an anti-side, this card's actually really useful. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it lets you kill some time because you're probably stuck in quarantine. Like I said before, I know it's just kind of a goofy meme list, but stay calm, use your heads, wash your damn hands, guys. It's Serious enough to worry about, but it's not serious enough to, like, buy all the toilet paper. What are you doing? So remember, guys, stay safe, stay clean, wash your hands, and remember, guys, if you don't troll the better who will, I will see you guys, uh, hopefully next time. <laughs>
be sure to subscribe to the channel this time. Or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat? 